A very good evening and welcome to Tara Stock. Well, it was all excitement yesterday afternoon in Crow Park as we reached the 2019 All Ireland Senior Football Final against the might of the Dubs. And what a place to be! Our county for the next few weeks will be a buzz because, uh, I suppose, we always dream coming into September that we're in an All Ireland Final, and well, it takes over our lives, I suppose. Uh, tonight in studio, I'll have uh, Dinny Long, uh, John Kennedy, and Liam Brosnan uh, as we discuss yesterday, and we'll chat about the minors as well. They're there on the programme and we'll be speaking about a career in sports. IT Tralee has the only coaching and sports performance course, uh, course even in Ireland now in its second year and we'll be speaking to um, about that course later on. Um, also, if you've been at the match yesterday, if you've seen anything, I'm sure that right throughout the day, Kerry today was carrying uh, a bit about the, the football game yesterday. Likewise, there was interviews played from post-match uh, conference yesterday uh, with both managers Mickey Hart and Peter Keane uh, what did you think of what they had to say uh, the dubs are waiting for us but I think um, well we're cute Kerry people I think we'll be ready for the dubs if you want to make a contact with us tonight uh, you can call us on 066 7123 text on 083 300 300 also on WhatsApp Terrace Talk on Facebook or tweet at Terrace Talk RK Terrace Talk at Radio Kerry Dot IE. And just got a, a message in here and it's Monty was in touch to say he was chatting uh, to some women recently who are mothers of young players who didn't make a certain sporting team following a cu- the cutting of a panel. The mothers were saying their respective sons took the news quite badly and felt a fuller explanation was required. The young men spent the following days in their rooms and we uh, didn't converse with anyone. Monty understands that every young footballer can make every team all the time, but he believes that if some young people, boys and girls, are working to make a team of some time, yet don't make it and they're dropped, the sporting body should offer some help, whether it be through a counsellor or specialist uh, psychiatrist, whether it's in the FAI, the IRFU, the GA and any other sporting body in the country. There should be facilities for young people when they face such a disappointment. If you have any views on that, uh, please contact our programme this evening. We'll go straight to Liam Brosnan, John Kennedy and Dinny Long. Liam Brosnan, what's it feel like you were out and about today? All Ireland final beckons. Isn't it great, Tim? Uh, yeah, look, everyone kind of woke up this morning with a smile in their face and the first words, usually <laughs> during the day, everyone would be talking about the weather or something like that, but the first words out of everyone's mouth today was, was about Kerry football and the All Ireland and Dublin, of course. But uh, no, it's it's just, look, it's, this is where we want to be every year. And I think this is what we're so used to down here in Kerry, I suppose, tradition. Is, is is massive and we all grow we all grew up with the great Kerry team and with the two lads here beside me you know, playing playing with the with the great teams and it was kind of the norm to get to all Ireland finals and we know I suppose around the table here how hard it is to get to an Ireland final and it showed yesterday that it, it is hard to get to an Ireland final. So look we'll we'll enjoy these these three weeks and I suppose the one part we won't enjoy will be the ticket hunting and the and all the texts would swear we're they're printing them today. and they're coming already. But look we'll we'll enjoy this and hopefully, and hopefully fing- fingers crossed you'll, you'll never know what could happen to him yeah John Kennedy what's it like a uh, player coming off the field at the end of an All-Ireland semi-final knowing that in three weeks time he's playing in that big day the field of dreams and the day you want it oh it's just huge Tim you know it's it's uh, semi-finals are there to be won and you know they're tricky always you know it, it doesn't matter how you play once you get the passage to the final and um, it's heartbreak to be beaten you could see what it meant to the Kerry supporters yesterday and to the players and you know as Liam said to reiterate what he said there you know it's, it's the buzz today like it's you're looking forward to an all Ireland final against Dublin it's what the purists look for I suppose with all due respect to the rest of the teams in the country Kerry Dublin huge tradition They'll be going back over the last 20 or 30 years in the, in the coming three weeks, like, and but this is a game of its own. It's massive for this team. You know, it's been a great run for them. Uh, you know, they're Munster champions, got to the league final, and now we're in the All Ireland final. And this is a very young, largely inexperienced team. And there's great credit due to the, we'll go through it later on, but there's tremendous credit due to the players, but to the management team. What's it like playing the dubs? 
knowing that you are going uh, to play the dubs. Look, th- this Dublin team is one of the best teams that have. But ever. how did it feel when you back? Oh, sure, it's brilliant, Tim. They're, they're, you know, what they bring to Croke Park, the support to bring the Hill 16 and you know Dublin play ball. You know, they're they're athletes and, and you they did have, okay I, out of it. You met your future wife. <laughs> <laughs> I did, she's, Tim. Yeah, she's a dub. <laughs> yeah, I must. So, I must have been. Not, I must have impressed her, Tim. Yeah, I tell you. <laughs> when, yeah, you did. You kicked a few frees that day. Was <laughs> coppers there that time? I went at that time, Tim. <laughs> Dilly, again, a, a boss in the county. You were part of Cork teams, likewise. Um, down here, when you see Kerry, is it, there's a re- going to be a real buzz for the next couple of weeks? Isn't oh, it? yeah, sure. Like you know, Tim, for football people, Gaelic football people, you know, that's what it is. The All Ireland final Sunday, you know, I'm going back to my hollow hair, and you know what it meant to us on the radio, and then what it meant to us in television, and then what it meant, you know, looking enough to play in in the series it, it's, it's fantastic and you know every one of the players from both sides and particularly the, a lot of the new Kerry players and, and there are a lot of new Kerry players you know it's a huge occasion for them they're 10 feet tall this morning and, and you know whereas there's an awful lot of people talking about the great Dublin team and they are a great Dublin team but these young fellas will go in and they, you know they'll give it a go because they have never been beaten if you like in the sense that they've had a great run like John said they were in the league final they now won an All Ireland final, so you know there's no such thing as kind of, I suppose, a territory for Kerry that they're happy to be in. Kerry are only happy to be in to win it, and 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 these fellas will look forward to that. It's a huge challenge for them, but if they were beaten, yes, be. if they were beaten yesterday, that challenge was gone. So no, they have three weeks. There'll be a great buzz, and you know it's a it's a one off game. The pressure is, is on Dublin because nobody expects Kerry to win. So it's it's a huge occasion, but a great occasion for the players. Yeah, definitely so. And now, lads, if you put on your headphones there, I'm delighted to have a former Kerry captain on the line, and the great man from Onniscall, Tommy Doyle. Good evening, Tommy. Evening, Tim. You're very welcome to Terrace Talk. Um, Thank you. Tommy, yesterday, I take it you were playing very close attention to that game. Uh, your take, first of all, on that first half with the Kingdom. Yeah, I suppose we were a small bit of I suppose found it hard maybe Tim for a while just to get to to, to grasp with what was going on. Try Tyrone were going to throw something different at you, but you know, second half we kind of got our act together. In the first half, I just thought we were playing into their hands a bit and we were attacking too much and leaving a lot of gaps at the back and making it a bit easy for Tyrone because they were able to hit their two forwards inside. And with all due respect, no matter what defender you are. If Good quality forwards again, good quality ball. You're in trouble. So, um, did you think that sweeper system worked? For, is, Paul Murphy seems to be very far away from uh, the two boys inside. They were and sometimes yeah. left isolated. It was very difficult for Paul as well. And that's a role that you must be well experienced to do. Yeah, I think sweeper. We've tried that for a while, and it doesn't just work for us. It's not to say that it can, but. I think you need a specialist type of fella to person to, 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 to do that. He was possibly a little bit too far away. You, have to, you actually have to be a lot closer to the 21, 25 yard line and covering across the pitch. And again, maybe, don't take me wrong, Paul Murphy's a fantastic footballer. Maybe a more dogged defender that would be able to read the game and cross back and forth. And it's a hard game to play if you're not used to it. And you know, I just think we've tried it a few times, and unless it becomes part of the game and we get the right type of people to, to play that game, I think we should leave it off. It's not really the carry away. So, you know, leave it off and let's concentrate on what we'll go at. And do you think what we did in the second half that we should have done it early in the game? Was it was it given too much respect uh, to Tyrone, Tommy? I wouldn't say respect, Tim. You, you know, you're above there and things are going at 100 miles an hour and you then need maybe a bit of time to to think and fair play to the management they got it right I mean for me we went back a little bit at, we went back at half time into the second half like we can play I mean for me David Morton was a colossus yesterday wow what a game what a player and I think he for me stayed around the middle of the field we played more of a little bit of a defensive game I see David picking ball off the full back line taking it out setting up scores with our half forwards he wasn't attacking we don't need people attacking we have enough of power up there if we get quick ball 
and you need to cover off, you need a few big men. There didn't that much come up the middle of us yesterday in the second half, which was, and you need to protect your backs a little bit. You need to protect your full back line. So I think, you know, the way I saw the second half go, I was really impressed. And the way the boys up front then, they got quick ball. I mean, Paul Ganey was fantastic. And young Clifford was, you know, the kick scores that, you know, I haven't seen that, that type of kicking being done you're up at the level of the Mike Sheehy's, the Colin Coopers, the Pat Spillans, and their one offs. The, the kicking done yesterday by Kerry for scores was brilliant. And you say, mentioned that there, uh, Tommy, it's about moving the ball fast because if you have forwards as good as David Clifford, uh, likewise Paul Ganey on the inside line, and Killing Spillan had to work very hard for uh, to win his own ball as well, yeah. that you have to let that go fast because you, uh, I suppose during the first half, uh, Tyrone did retreat if you were going lateral passing. Well, they did, and they had a lot of people back, and we were probably taking a bit of ball into the tackle. You can't take ball into tackle when it's that congested. You're going to get turned over. And to the second half, we moved it a lot quicker. And coming back to Killian Spillan, great find, really settling in well. And, when you, you know, the lads are cute enough. Those inside forwards are educated guys. They're sharp guys. They make quick runs, and they're making that type of play all their life. So... And they've been brought up the right way. They've been brought up in the right skill set. They have a fantastic skill set. So they know what they're doing. And if you, when they make runs, you give them the ball as quick as you can. You won't, they won't get it easy every time. But I think what I saw in the second half yesterday, I was, I tell you, I was really happy when that game was over. Really happened. And I said, you know, we can get back a little bit to contesting in the middle of the field, keeping. David there, plus Adrian Spillan, whoever we're going to play with him, and showed up a little bit at the back and let, you know, impose our game. And I think we imposed our game on Tyrone well in the second half, and I don't think they had an answer to it. Uh, Tommy, um, now I suppose all to the Dublin game now. Uh, Kerry will be going in as the complete underdogs. Dublin are described as a machine, and you have to say that, uh, well, going for the strive for five, uh, it's got, uh, I suppose, similarities with 1982. Yeah, I suppose it has, Tim, but... You don't like me mentioning you know, 1982, do you? No, sure, sure, there's no problem with that, but you crack for that. But I think that, look, we're always under dogs going to Pope Park when it comes down to it, and I think we've per- performed quite well there, and we have done down the years. Um, I don't think the razzmatazz of drive for fives or will pose any problem to these lads. And they'll just go about their business management or good solid fellas. They'll keep them well, well done, feeding the ground. So I think if they stay away from all that crack, um, go out and impose their game, yeah, Dublin are a fair machine. And you, you've got to take your hand off to them. But, you know, if we get our matchups right with them, Tim, you know, if you look at us, we've, there's a team there, there's a panel, there's an unreal skill set, unreal skill set by these players. Unfortunately, or fortunately not, you've come this distance without a James who two, three years ago, the player of the year, and I wish him well, and I hope he's in there fighting for a place at some time. But uh, if we get all matchups right with Dublin, and we have the player to match up with them, there are four or five key players in my book, and if we match up with those... I think we'd be very, very close there. Very close. And Tommy, they're, they're going to worry about us as well. I say the form that David Clifford is in, likewise Paul Ganey, uh, Stephen O'Brien, and plus the substitutes that can come on a hard working half forward line. Uh, this probably wouldn't be Dublin's favourite team to meet in an All Ireland final. Oh no, I can guarantee you, Dublin were hoping to have win that game yesterday, and they can say what they like. But I suppose, in fairness to, to, to Dublin, you know if they're the champions that they are and fair play to them, they're going to come and play their game. They may not worry about us and they may play a kind of an expansive game. And if they do, in a way, it can suit us. Um, they're big, powerful men, big, powerful team. But uh, behind it all, Tim, they're, they're the one, we would be the one team they would fear. And I think we're rightly so. We're in the right place. We deserve to be in this final. We've come a long way. Just listening to the lads there, you know, we've had league finals, we've had beat Cork, we've been in Super 8s, beat Tyrone. This team, in fairness to them, so far have done everything we've asked them. So they're in there, which I wouldn't say nothing to lose because they're not going up to think about losing, they're going up to win. Take it from me, they're going up to win.
and rightly so. Any advice for these young players, Tommy? You've gone up the Hogan stand yourself to collect uh, the Sam Maguire. You've uh, seven All-Ireland medals. Uh, when you're a young guy of 20, 21, 22 years of age, um, these guys have to stay grounded for the next couple of weeks? I uh, do. I think, look, do you know now, Tim, I think from what I know of them, the few lads I do know on the backroom team, in fairness to Peter Keane, his, pe- his, his lads and They'll, they'll just keep their head down, train like mad. This will be a one-off. they look back on this in 20 years' time. It will be a one-off. It will be a huge effort, huge effort, focus, commitment, everything that they need and that they've bought up with over the last 10 years, 12 years, the skill sets they've got at school. You know, that, that'll come to Crow Park. That'll stand to them. Um, the only thing I can say is wish them all the good. We'll be there shouting and roaring for them. But to stay focused, train, do what the management tells you. And if there was ever one game that they have to leave it all on the pitch, it'll be in three weeks' time, Tim. Yeah, that's a lovely way to finish. Tommy Dial, as always, delighted to hear from you uh, this evening. Uh, thanks a million for coming on Terrace. No hassle, Tommy. Thank you. Best that's of luck to you. That's the great uh, former captain, Tommy Dial, and he'd go through a wall for the kingdom, and I'm sure our guys on the 1st of September will do the same. Uh, those comments coming through to us. Well done to Kerry players and management. If we had the management a few years ago, uh, Dublin wouldn't be going for five in a row, and that comes from Anne in Licks. Now, it no, uh, it's no thanks to the referee that Kerry are in the All-Ireland come on the kingdom and that comes from a two-sis caller uh, asked the panel on Terrace Talk uh, their opinion on the delay uh, by Peter Keane in making uh, the changes needed uh, there was no target man or cover for full ba- in the full back line until half time a similar delay against Dublin would be game over uh, we'll address that text right after this break Terrace Talk on Radio Kerry brought to you in association with BrianJames.ie leading the way for stylish menswear in Kerry you're very welcome back here to Terrace Talk Plus later on in the programme. We're speaking to a Tipperary man who has the famous uh, piece of Kerry memorabilia. Uh, Jamie Barrett, a tallest man who was behind the goal when Morris Fitzgerald kicked that point from the sideline against Dublin in 2001. Actually, I watched that game the other night again and what a super score. What a great game. Seamus Moynihan was absolutely outstanding in that game. Um, the comment before the break, lads, uh, well, a number of them. We were on about there was no target man for cover at full-back until half-time. A similar delay against Dublin would be game over. Liam? Yeah, I suppose um, we were struggling up uh, uh, up to half-time, Tim. But look, to say the management, you know, the management picked their best 15. The 15 that's the, that were picked were, uh, according to the management, that's their best 15. Because they're the guys that see them in training every, every day. We don't, we're not privy to what goes on behind closed doors. So we take it that that's the best 15 that they think it, that it was right. Now, Tyrone got off to... Uh, we all know Ty- Tyrone were going to set up this, this defence defensive structure. Uh, I suppose the big talking point was, was the Paul Murphy, you know, playing as the... Um, the, I, what I would call an extra defender I don't think he was playing a sweeping role Tim because if you're playing a sweeping role and these guys are intelligent footballers and the management are looking down on it as well so a sweeping role is basically a guy standing in front of the opposition main man in the full forward line Paul wasn't doing that so Kerry hadn't set up a sweeper he wasn't a sweeper I think what, what basically because Tommy Griffin ran onto him a, a number of times and he was never there and we never saw him stand in front of McShane so that wasn't the management ID we? or it, not to, to play that well, way. Why wasn't there somebody put in front of Mike Sheen? Because I suppose the, the way the management, uh, looking at Peter all through the year, he's he's looking at his players that they can that they, they can man up and they can you know match man to man. We like defensively all year, Tim. We haven't had sweepers. We haven't had we're we're kind of playing a kind of a defensive structure man to man. Like uh, Paul Murphy was holding his centre back position. You know, he wasn't a sweeper. So, is that a dangerous game, Liam? Man it, to man, like we know. Oh, it's how, a very dangerous. We all know good how. Yeah, we how thought we, we we thought above a meet, and and meet were no world beaters, and we were in trouble in the full in the full back line as well, and and we um, we didn't seem to put a man back in front of our full forward line either, and we got out of that game. I do think that if we do that against Dublin, we will be we will be in. I think that we will be in, in serious pressure from from the war go. So what do you say? So, that we play a sweeper? No, I I don't think you can play a sweeper against Dublin. <clears throat> Um, I honestly think you have to man up against uh, you have to get your, your like Tommy Dial said you have to get your matchups right 
and I think against Dublin, if you look back to the league final, was it a couple of years ago that we beat them? It's it's man to man. You you can't you can't afford to leave to to leave Dublin guys run at you. Uh, same with our kickouts. We got to push up on their kickouts. You know, um, I think yesterday the first half was was down to basically shadow boxing. You know, Kerry were kind of look. It was a, a big occasion for a lot of these young fellas. Tyrone were 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 flat out. You know, they were they were up and down the field. They they hit hard, and I do think a lot of it in the second half then as well was Kerry composure and Tyrone. And, and there isn't much said about it today. Tyrone's legs did drop did die a small bit we, we we found it easier to break tackles than we did in the first half in the second half you know, their intensity died a small bit and it was the fitness or what the game they were and it's the, well. it was the game they couldn't keep going the game so so it's like you look any team Tim will stay with will stay with Kerry and it'll be the same in the Atlanta final any team will stay with Kerry Dublin for the first 30 minutes it's the, it's the second 30 minutes is where games are won and lost and, that, and, that, and that's what we have to aim for against Dublin was comments coming through to us uh, was in the lower uh, Hogan uh, section 328 yesterday and after seeing uh, all of the off the ball stuff I think if there were two linesmen each side it would cut out a lot of it uh, at the moment as the linesman has to follow the play and can't see what's going on behind him that comes from uh, Peter and that came through Facebook uh, Trevor O'Sullivan on Twitter at halftime Kerry's inexperience was evident in abundance but they showed great character for such a side to adjust aided by clever switches from management uh, this and the final um, massive learning curve this year may be a step too far but the future is bright John I suppose that was evident in the first half that uh, like they directed mm. the game you could say Tyrone under their terms Paul Ganey and David Clifford had to come outside the 45 to win ball yeah Tim it was frustrating do you know the the first half was, was we kicked two points from play um, in 35 37 or 8 minutes of play not good enough I felt that that you know we were we were playing Tyrone were dictating what was happening they are two men full forward line while they never got inside and created goal scoring chances they were always a threat Paul Murphy as we've said before he was in no man's land really he was too far away from them and he was kind of being bypassed. But you have to give credit. That was 35 minutes, like Liam said, you could say it was shadow boxing. But they certainly got it right, the management team at half time. It's very difficult to get to get to make switches and to get communication during the game because Tommy Griffin ran in several times. And when there are men coming through the middle, you could see Paul Murphy was drifting towards them. The ball was over the top, and Matty Donnelly and Max Shane, they're two quality players. And I felt that overall, Marley and, and Jason Foley did quite well. Now, we were looking a number of occasions, the ball broke in our favour, we'll have to say that. But the second half, you know, there were brave calls. I was on at half time myself, and I said, I felt we needed to do something around the middle of the field, and we needed Tommy Welch. Jack Sherwood's impact was huge. Can I take you back, John? Uh, which you spoke about it was evident or we were all aware that Matty Donnelly and McShane were good footballers so if we have David Clifford and Paul Ganey inside you won't be man marked by the opposite they'll play a man in front of him because I, I, you have to admit and I, I actually a pity for Jason Foley yesterday he was carted off but Jason Foley broke ball when he couldn't catch yeah. it over him but there was it was Tyrone for us picking up the break. Yeah, there was a big gap to him. And, but then and that's where then a guy has to play in front of those guys. Absolutely. It? And at the other Would side... Would you have done it yesterday? Would you have put somebody in right directly well, in front of the two guys? To be fair, Tim, I think the idea was to play Paul Murphy, but he didn't play deep enough. That's what it appeared to us anyway, open the stand, that, that Paul Murphy was playing in that role, but he was too far away from the... They were playing inside in the 13, 21 metre line. They weren't coming out. And Tyrone were getting good ball is in. Is there a difference between double tagging and a sweeper? Oh, there is. Yeah. So should we have double tagged? Well, you see... This is what people... I, I'm only relaying see, questions it's easy, being asked. It's easy to say double tagging and that, but, but like, you know, it starts from above. And, you know, Tyrone had swarmed us at the back. We, were, we weren't winning the breaking ball. We weren't winning ball around the middle of the field. You know, we, we were hanging on in the no, first I, half. I, I know, John, I'm going to pin you now on the threat. The mm. threat was the two boys inside. Yeah. And what would you do with two boys? Forget about what happened out the field now. Yeah. But it, but it's that, ball, it, it, all this starts, Tim, from, from our full forward line. That, that we were being beaten for 50-50 ball that went in. And Tyrone were dictating what was happening. They were coming forward. There are no better team in the country to hold possession, break at pace, and they got quality ball into the boys inside. Now, they kick five points between them, Max Shane and Matty Donnelly. But you'd have to say to him that, like, it is very easy to say, take guys back, but you're affording them the opportunity of going forward in and kicking points from long range, which we did in the second half. Tyrone hadn't the ability to do that from far out. They were depending on the two boys. They're a huge threat. They're a huge threat, but... Give credit to the Kerry management team. 
John, they, they gathered at half time and the second half of the total transformation. Tim, I think John. Paul Murphy's role was basically to stop the runners coming down to the middle. It wasn't to stand in front of McShane. McShane, it was he held his centre no, back the, position. No, and the, no I, I know where Paul. The way he I, was lo- I was looking at Paul Murphy for seventy minutes. Yeah. I, know, I know where he was in the field because several times during the the commentary, Amherst alluded that the space between Paul Murphy and the boys, he was in no man's land. My point, and it was asked. Today, it was said on the radio yesterday, didn't he seen as John avoided my answer? <laughs> <laughs> well, would, you have, would you have double tagged McShane? We, well, we know McShane is the David Clifford of Tyrone. Yeah. Well, would you leave David Clifford one on one with a, a, a defender inside? No. What uh, would you do? Uh, obviously, you play somebody in front of him. Because if you look yesterday, and I look, Paul Murphy is. We're not coming down. I'm not coming down, Paul oh, Murphy. Not, not at, at all. all. Not what at all. I'm saying. From what I saw with Paul Murphy's role, it was a no man role. It appeared to me that he was an outlet for the full back line rather than a sweeper, if you want to call him a sweeper. If you're playing, in my opinion, if you're playing an extra back, that extra back has to be positioned maybe five or six yards at most in front of your full back. That's the idea to cover that particular area. McShane was the outlet. And in fact, if you look back in it, McShane, when Kerry got in top, Tyrone still persisted with kicking the ball in. And at that stage in the second half, Kerry seemed to have two or three fellas back around him. So the ball going in, no matter how good, he wasn't going to get it. But mm. going back to the, uh, the sweeper, I don't... Uh, Kerry are not used to playing a sweeper. They, they don't seem to have somebody, uh, I won't say capable of doing it, but they, it's, not, it's just not their game. But if they are playing somebody back against Dublin, I think you must stay within a couple of yards of your full-back to protect that position. But Tim, if I may come in there, I'd say Tyrone's game plan is they're ahead. They dictate what's happening. Which they hold is. position. Now, I said it at half time yesterday, if Kerry come level and go point up, then Tyrone will have to change, change their, their shape. And they had to change their shape. I agree with Dini. They still wanted to get ball into McShane, but they had to go, they had to change their game plan to to come to counteract what we were doing. There's no better team to dictate. They were ahead. Don't forget that they were ahead in the first half. It was very easy to do it, but it's a difficult one to do. What Paul Murphy was, he was in no man's land. Tim, he could win a sit inside. He'd allow guys through the middle. We've been speaking all the year here about the gap being opened up. Not one Tyrone fellow went through the middle yesterday. They got the ball in over the top. They got the diagonal ball in. That was cut. That that they cut out the avenue up through the middle. So it's very very difficult. Uh, and I think at half time, Jack Sherwood brought a mobility to it. Gavin White had a huge influence, and Brian Begley going back certainly tidied it up. And we were dictating when we hit the li- when we got in front of him, we weren't going to be beaten. Didn't John Kennedy come back well there? No, he got you there. No, Tim and that one into he didn't get me because <laughs> nobody's. And, and all I'm saying is uh, for yeah. for thirty five minutes. And John, you were sitting at the other side of Amber. My ear was red from Ambrose roaring into about that there should be somebody playing in front of him and no different to people saying today I'm only just we, we can only talk about what we saw yesterday yeah. we, we talk about the great things that happened with Kerry in the second half and we know how difficult Tyrone are to play against but we were saying he's saying we can do sweeper but then you can double tag as John alluded to double tagging and sweeper are two different things exactly and I do think and I agree I, I agree with John I think the way Kerry set up set up yesterday was to stop the runner down, down to the middle the Tyrone running down to the middle and Tyrone had to go for the over the top decision into McShane now we're on about McShane he played well yesterday but like that he created no goal opportunities no, so I think Peter well, and, he, I, I and, Peter think, and well, his management let's be fair let's call yeah. a spade a spade I'd, I'd compliment both Tyg Morley and, and Jason. Jason. They played him from behind. Because did, yeah, a lot yeah. of people said, oh, because of his speed, Jason Foley should play him from the... I'd admire what Jason Foley did yeah. yesterday because when he won a couple of balls off him, the next time there was a high ball in, he fisted it down. Yeah. And that is my point. And, and I think that's why yesterday, Peter Keane... There, there should be a carry guy picking that yeah, ball up. Peter Keane and the management seem to have faith in the defenders that they can man they can man mark. And we has, we saw the same above in Ross Common the week before where we, where we were on, in, under pressure in the full forward line and there was no change made he, you know, it, it, was, it was just left there now the flip side in the Dublin when we have Conor Callaghan and Mannion and these fellas in sight what are Kerry going to do are, are, can we match up man to man against him are we going to be double tagging them that's going to be they're going to be the questions in the, ne- in the next three weeks I think we had we had enough we had enough to, uh, kind of defenders to match Tyrone now yesterday I think I think Peter went down and said we'll match up these man to man we'll stop them breaking down to the middle and, and I, that's, that's the way they set up
we'll now take a break. Terrace Talk on Radio Kerry, brought to you in association with BrianJames.ie, leading the way for stylish menswear in Kerry. You're very welcome back here to Terrace Talk and loads of comments coming through to us. Of course, I have uh, Dini Long, John Kennedy and Liam Brosnan in studio. Uh, one of those comments outside of football for the moment to anyone who made the journey up. What did you think of the cost? Was, uh, was it a reason for a very small crowd? Please let us know this evening because we have one or two texts in about that as well. Um, good evening, Tim. Uh, can you ask Dini, uh, what does he think? Uh, of Kerry now that he gave us no hope all year and that comes from the man from top of the comb in Kilgarvan John Creedon well I don't say I, I didn't give him any hope I said I thought that that Tyrone would shade it on the day and that, you know there was only one score in it the difficult but task it's, it's, it's a, you know you have to give an opinion and I thought that Tyrone would shade it with experience and that because Kerry were quite a young team this, on the day but so the two boys shoot me down here for having an opinion on Terrace <laughs> Talk. Uh, Mick from Summerhill County Meet, the Kerry footballers don't come to Crow Park to just walk around, but I couldn't believe what I saw yesterday. The more Dublin built themselves up, the better for us. Pat from Kid Cummins says, well done to the Kerry seniors, uh, but why are we not starting our best 15 players and how come we are slow to make changes? Alice from Valencia said, congrats to the Kerry team yesterday. Remember the 1975 game, the young single Kerry boys took on the talented dubs that day and beat them well. Only thing is they have to play for both halves. Great victory yesterday. Fears deuce to them. Paddy O'Shea did it all. We carry supporters our animals. And that comes from Pat Kelly in Kilrush. Uh, the fellow that gave Shane Ryan the high uh, tackle yesterday, he could have broken his neck. And we'll actually speak about that later on the programme. He should have got a red card. That comes from a trelly listener Hi Tim, well done to the Kerry players and management for sorting things out at half time they all have, uh, will have a right go at the dubs, hard luck to the minors uh, on another day uh, they would have won uh, but it wasn't to be their day and that comes from Charles, uh, great commentary by yourself and Ambrose, thank you Charles. Hi Tim uh, both Kerry and Dublin uh, beat a tired Mayo team by 10 points so on that maybe there's not uh, much between us. Kiri Abu Hi Tim uh, and panel good second half yesterday after a poor first half questions uh, for you what about playing Spillane and Barry in the middle of the field and David Moran uh, inside against the dubs that comes from uh, Brendan Offaly and Killarney. Liam Brosnan yeah, it's been an interesting one. All right, I suppose we'll be coming up with all these theories now in the next in the next two weeks. But I can't see many changes. There will be probably maybe one or two, maybe one, but I don't think there'll be anything drastic. And we won't. I can't see David Morn. I'd like to see Tommy Welch in there, but I, I can't see David Morn starting in there because he's playing at midfield. Yeah. Anyway. Tommy Welch has to start in the final. Other than that, I will trust the management to pick the best team. Tom Buddy Mac. John Kennedy? Yeah, Tommy Welch has said I thought he had a huge game yesterday, Tim. I thought all the substitutes but particularly Jack Sherwood, Gavin White and Tommy and, you know, I certainly would believe... It's how you finish as well now. It's how you finish. I certainly would believe in David Morton in midfield. He was he was probably my man of the match yesterday, I'll be honest with you, Tim. Uh, Stephen O'Brien obviously had a superb game but David Morton dictated, you know, he, he, he showed all his experience and he's in a rich vein of form at the moment and hopefully he'll, he, he won't pick up any knocks or injuries and we need him against Dublin. He'll have a huge influence in the game and, and I think that there's certainly Tommy will too whether he starts or comes off the bench he's, he's another option and you know he gives you another detail inside he, everything stuck to him yesterday he wasn't afraid to throw his weight around. He's a big man and uh, he, he took the pressure off of David Give us Clifford. something different. David Clifford and Paul Gainey got a bit space when he came on. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Uh, the final, that f- f- starting 15 or finishing f- 15. Uh, good evening, Tim. Sick and tired of listening to how good this Dublin team is. How many of this team have played in the last four All-Irelands? There's a lot of new faces on that team. That comes from a Castle Island caller. Um, Yerra lads, don't mind the changes in the team. Peter Keane has proven every single one of these changes have been pivotal uh, to the our road on winning Sam. I couldn't care less about the late changes. Uh, we win and we are true to the final uh, you can't please everyone up the kingdom uh, Tomas in North Kerry says um, three points to make a great win by the seniors with Jack Sherwood uh, being a great impact sub I was there and the only uh, coffee kept me awake in the first half no wonder small crowd with this type of football Miners kicked it away uh, pressure of the six in a row must have been there 
too uh, individualistic in the forward line but still proud of those boys crazy that the county hurling championships uh, fixed for the same day as Dublin v Mayo I appreciate that arranging fixtures is a tough job but the hurling people are GA people who follow both codes Dinny Long the second half yesterday Kerry came out a different team in the second half and they got those early scores yeah well I suppose you know uh, at half time obviously they, they had to, to look at the thing and, and uh, I suppose it was a change of attitude really uh, and what great had to improve you know Kerry were probably probably showing a little bit too much respect to Tyrone and, and, and stood off him if you like uh, in the second half obviously four points down had only kicked two points from play uh, and in fact Kerry probably should have been more down at half time because Kerry got two or three scores as bad, bad uh, passing by the Tyrone team, which Tyrone, you know, are noted for not giving away the ball. They made two or three errors, which Kerry capitalised on and fair play to them. But Kerry could have been down six, seven points at half time. Now, they went out the second half and they outscored uh, Tyrone 113 to, to nine points. So obviously, they, they decided, you know, if we don't get our act together here, we're not going to be in the All Island final. And hats off to them. The changes worked. Tommy Welsh worked. Uh, young Sherwood worked. Everybody that came on worked, but Sherwood and Tommy Welsh in particular. And I thought, you know, between the two of them, I think that Sherwood had a huge impact. He changed the game. He changed the game. And Tommy Welsh then gave him that outlet that, that you know, he won everything that went in. He was big and he was awkward. I think that the Tyrone fullback was afraid that it was going to come in high and he stood off him and it was kicked in low. And, you know, he, a bit like Paul Murphy, he was in no man's land, the fullback for Tyrone. So it worked and Tommy laid it off and Kerry got some very good scores out of it. Definitely so. Uh, you never know. Uh, we might have a Seamus Derby. Wouldn't that be sweet? Of course, that's uh, well, we had Tommy Doyle on earlier, and uh, well, he knows all about a Seamus Derby. Likewise, Charlie and Ellig and all those years, Kerry were going for the five, but uh, sport can be a very cruel uh, thing, and Croke Park can be a very cruel place if you don't win. Uh, why did the Kerry team drive up in their own cars yesterday? It comes from Paddy Lane. Well, did they drive up themselves? Uh, usually they take a train or a bus, but if anyone knows this is the case, please let us know here on Terrace Talk. Uh, what would the panel think of starting the full forward line for the game against Dublin? David Clifford, Tommy Welch and Paul Ganey. Again, Liam, uh, it, it'll be interesting what that starting... It's it, As we said earlier, it's about who finishes as well. Exactly, yeah. And it'll be up to the management whether the, like the, you have... It, it, it could go two ways, Tom, or Tim. Basically, that you you don't start Tommy Welch, and you're hoping that you're in the game by half time, and you you spring him, or you you take the chance to to go, to go with him from the word go and go at Dublin because you'll be hoping that the game hasn't slipped by half time. And Dublin are a team that you'd have to start strong because you you see the weekend seven or eight minutes in the game could be over. They they could they could blitz you very quick, you know. So it's going to, it's going to be very interesting the, the the first fifteen that's going to start against Dublin. But look the management have, have got all the calls right so far all through the year so this is this is a big one now for them and um, we have we have our fa- we have our faith in them because they, they've got everything right so far so we, we can't we can't complain yeah definitely so uh, Tim thanks to you and Ambrose yesterday for uh, the commentary on the game you were brilliant Mary from Listowel thank you Mary I think uh, Kerry are going to Croke Park at uh, this time especially after losing the National League final in Croke Park is positive that comes from a Kilcommon caller um, Killarney caller whichever team wins the final it will be immortality for them also any subs that are not uh, to be made should be made at half time in calmness of the dressing room instead of the heat of the moment and the pitch John Kennedy I suppose that's a fair point like you said it's very difficult to get a message out onto players and you've known you've been in dressing rooms at half time either giving the speeches or taking the speeches so you're, you're in your own little bubble inside there there's no doubt, Tim, but I think that, that you know, it's, it's gone so professional now, Tim, that there's guys up in the stand, you know, I've seen Donny Buckley and Morris Fitzgerald up there a number of occasions, they're, they're wired up to somebody in the line, and, you know, you get an aerial view, which is totally different to the sideline view, and I think that, to agree with Liam, you know, we, we have often sit here and we've questioned decisions, but you have to say that the management team have got it right. What team starts in the final and what team finishes, it'll depend, you know, uh, 
It's the one that finishes just as important as the start. Absolutely. It's form and training. And, you know, you look at Killian Spillane, you look at Tommy Welsh. There was people saying, would Tommy ever get his chance? She certainly got his chance yesterday and he took it with both hands and he has put himself in the frame to be certainly involved and to play a big part in the final. And, you know, likewise, Killian Spillane and, you know, Brian Begley, when he went back into the half-back position, he, they grew in confidence as the game went on. And I think this victory will be huge for them. Do you think there's a confidence that... Uh, grown within the team and the panel as a whole like somebody reflected today or remarked today uh, David Clifford kicking points from, no he's an exceptional talent but taking on scores from 35-40 yards out likewise Shawnee Shea you know with those 45s these guys are confident players. There's no doubt about it, Tim. And you, you mentioned two of the younger lads there. Shawnee Shea kicked frees in the second half. Every free was a pressure kick. Because, you know, we've seen great players missing vital scores in hurling and football at vital stages. Shawnee Shea, he kicked them over the bar yesterday. Clifford kicked a few super scores. Paul Ganey, the scores in the second half were top drawer. And Stephen O'Brien, 1-2. He started the moving for the goal That's team right, and turnover. he finished it. What a work rate like. This was incredible. But you could see it, the, the, whole, the, the stand reacted to the players in the field and the players in the field bought into that. I think that, you know, we finished in a real high and we're going into a final team having beaten Tyrone and having got a victory in Croke Park. We hadn't won in Croke Park for a bit. This was a huge psychological win. And up in Navin the week before, Kerry seemed to be finishing... You know, in a real positive fashion in games. Do you know, in, in the past, we've kind of left the lead slip. Uh, but with this Kerry team, is that down to youth and legs? It's, I'll tell you, it's down to the strength and conditioning, Tim, and it's down to the training. You look at David Morden. Six or eight or ten weeks ago, Tim, you know, he wasn't finishing games well. People were saying his he's legs... Full of, were, he was full of energy. He's full in, of energy. They're getting it right. Like, you know, this is a science, Tim. Kerry have obviously planned to be in an All-Ireland final but they didn't say it outside but th this is the plan to have every guy ready for the first Sunday in September and they appear to be ready Tyrone were found wanting fitness wise in the last 10 minutes we were coming at him in waves they were hanging on we had the legs and the subs we brought in to, to, to repeat it again every one of them made a big impact uh, Dinny, this is a very interesting journey. So, for, you know, Peter Keane coming off winning uh, three in a row uh, minor titles as manager and suddenly he's in a league final. He's he's actually learning about his players as well and they're learning about his management style and his, uh, well, his selectors and what have you. But things are gelling nicely, you could say, for Kerry. You don't, by accident, you know, fall into an all Ireland final. No, but I suppose the first thing you'd have to say is like that Peter Keane, you know, was born into football. A ferocious tradition. Uh, I'd say spoke football from once he was able to, to probably stand up. So the, 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 he wouldn't be short of knowledge. And, you know, you can know by his interviews and, you know, he's as tough as nails. He takes it all That's in. For sure. Yeah, and he, he, he weighs it up. But, you know, he gives all the right answers anyway. So, you know... Everybody knows a football guy, you'd often hear the hurling crowd saying, you know, he's a great hurling man. But Peter Keane, and I don't want to be, you know, blowing him up, but what I'm saying is that he's football from the top of his head to his toes. And when you have that knowledge and that experience, and he played at a high level, he, he did everything that you could Wanted could have done and then you know he, he served his time with other managers and then he came in and be his own man at the minor level and he was handed a senior job he's done a very good job in fairness a great job and now you know as I said before with that type of knowledge the players that he has they are buying into what he's doing and the one thing that Kelly have done since Peter Keane and that management took over all through the league and now through the championship, they're winning games in the last 10 minutes, a quarter of an hour. You go back over their league results. They won very few games going away. But in the end, when the game was tight, they always found a way to win. It's very hard that's, to buy that. That's a big plus. Yeah, definitely. So uh, we now take a break. Terrace Talk on Radio Kerry. Brought to you in association with BrianJames.ie. Leading the way for stylish menswear in Kerry. You're very welcome back here to Terrace Talk. I've Dinny Long, John Kennedy, and Liam Broston in studio. And just to mention, of course, from the entertainment side, there's a limited amount of tickets left for our Sounds Country uh, with the Stars concert in the Teen Thon Theatre in Ballybunnan on this Wednesday night. And we advise people to pre purchase their tickets, and we cannot guarantee tickets on the night. And so, John Kennedy, Dinny Long, and maybe Liam Broston will be stepping out in the Teen Thon Theatre on Wednesday night. And now we go to our phone line because we have an Arkerryman on the line. A 
and he works with balls.ie. That's PJ Brown. Good evening, PJ. Good evening, Tim. Thanks you're, for having me on the show. You're welcome once again. Well, PJ, um, I, I, when we had you on before in the show, going back a couple of months ago, we were saying uh, where we are between league and looking forward to the championship. Suddenly, we're in an All-Ireland final. What does that feel like? It's pretty good. I mean, although yesterday it didn't feel like an All-Ireland semi-final, I guess, the, the atmosphere there was, was pretty terrible. But, like, apart from that, it's, uh, it's great for this, like, good young Kerry team to be in this position because I, I don't know if, if everyone really expected to be here this year, to have gone this far this, this year. And you have to have a small bit of luck as well, uh, PJ, in the game. But yesterday, Kerry made their own look in the sense that they learned from their first half uh, experience of how um, Tyrone dictated matters and played the game mm. under their terms. But suddenly they seemed to throw off the shackles and run and we had a lot of pace and it did damage. Definitely. I, I thought, like, in the first half, the Kerry attack was so kind of, like, ponderous. It was, it, it was really slow. There was, they looked like, Kerry were playing like a basketball team that were standing around the perimeter, but there was no one on the inside. And then in the second half, that kind of changed. There was, they were, Kerry kind of pushed up a lot more, and there were more attackers on the inside, and that gave Tyrone kind of real problems. It, it, it was kind of strange, because the way Tyrone played, that's like, their default setting. I, I would have thought that Kerry should have known that's the way Tyrone are going to play and they would have been more able able of breaking it down in the first half. Did you feel that, are you saying so, that Kerry were slow in making those changes or slow in uh, trying to break uh, Tyrone down? Perhaps, like, I, I did think it was a little bit strange. That, I mean, it was kind of obvious what was happening and that I, it, maybe, maybe it's hard to make those changes on the pitch and that it did take until the half time for you, you know, you know, to get it's very that. hard to get the message, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, to get the message across. Maybe you have to be in a half time and tell everyone what they need to do. But like, it, it, it is good that Kerry recognised where the problem was and then were able to exploit, like, like Tyrone. Yeah, definitely a compliment to the management on that. And uh, Kerry definitely. came out in the second half. Outstanding individual performances, but uh, one man that we're all talking about at the moment and hopefully his uh, black card against uh, Meath will be rescinded, uh, the great Stephen O'Brien. We don't want to go into an All-Ireland final without this man. Definitely not. He's, he's, like, he's definitely one of our players of the year. I mean, like he's probably, like if he was to play in the All-Ireland final, and I think he will, he, he seemed like, in those interviews afterwards, he seemed like a man who was pretty confident of playing in the All Ireland final. He didn't look too worried. But yeah, he's, I, he, like, he could be like an outside chance for, for a player of the year, maybe, you know, if he was to have a good final. He was, he was brilliant yesterday. He was, especially in the second half, I thought he was magnificent. The, the goal, like, the, he started that goal on his own, in his own half, deep in his own half, kind of pretty much inside the, the semicircle, and ran the whole way up the pitch onto Paul Ganey's hand pass. It kind of reminded me a little bit of kind of like Donegal, like I'm sure like Donegal Walsh, I'm certain he did, like score, had similar kind of goals in the past, making those long kind of runs from deep that are, that are really hard to track. And yeah, it, it, I really would be hopeful, and I think he will, that he will end in the final. And PJ, we're all supporters of Kerry, coming off a great feeling uh, and a sense of anticipation, I suppose, taking on the might of the dubs. But Kerry are quite uh, well uh, equipped to take on uh, this uh, serious, serious Dublin side. I think there's, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's it's a game about which there's going to be a lot of excitement, and Kerry definitely has. They, they're, it's going to be like a very, it's going to be a very different game to that Tyrone game. I mean, like the Dublin aren't going to play that. Defense that is hard to break down. It's, it's going to be a lot of a lot of kind of one on one kind of matchups, I, I, I guess, and that will probably carry more. I mean, th- this game maybe it'll end up being a shootout. It, it could it could be like a it could be a final for the ages, hopefully, and maybe Kerry will stop the five in a row. Well, it's definitely something to look forward, PJ. PJ, thanks a million for coming on Terrace Talk, and uh, the best of luck. Uh, you're doing great work, of course, with Balls.ie. We always uh, use that link to see what's happening, and it's great to see Kerry men up there. Thanks a million for coming on Terrace Talk this evening. No problem at all, then. Thanks well, very that's much. That's PJ Brown, um, North Kerry man, working with Balls.ie. Um, quick uh, question for you, John. Uh, does John feel that Dublin is perfect and powerful running and link up play? Is it the is it not is it something you can break down, John? Well, Tim, there's nothing that you can't break down. But first of all, you have to say that they're the forum team. They're going for five in a row. They're a superb footballing team. Uh, 
they had athleticism in their panel. You know, they'll be favourites for it. But Tim, you know, we have forwards. And forwards win... Not the counties are without them. Correct. And forwards win games. I feel, and we've said this a few times here in the studio, if we can get our matchups right defensively, and if we can curtail the Dublin forwards, that's a huge if. I would give us a chance. There's no doubt about it. You know, whatever they say about Jim Gavin, he's doing a marvellous job. He seems to be taking things in his stride. But there will have to be a certain amount of pressure. Are they as good as they were? You know, this is going to be a real test. I think Mayo showed the last day for 35 minutes what can be done. Now, the other side of it was the second 35 minutes, Dublin really powered them. Yeah. Superb footballers. Give them half a chance. And if the gaps that were there in the first half yesterday are there next in, on, on, on the first one in September, we'll be in big trouble. Uh, going back, and I know we'll be speaking in, in detail after seven uh, about uh, that Dublin game. Uh, Liam, we mentioned the management style there, but you have hats off to, to Peter Keane, and I deal a lot with him in post-match interviews, and uh, it was quite humorous at times uh, yesterday afternoon in Crow Park. He's willing to deal with us, trying to pin him here and there with questions, and you have to admire the man for that. But the guys that he has support in him as well, uh, these guys know their stuff. The, they do. the James Foley's, the Tommy Griffins of this world, Morris Fitz and, and Donny Buckley. Buckley yeah. They're and, serious side. And their physical training. We don't often talk about the management team, do we? Exactly, they're S and C team, you know, there's there's a big backroom staff there, and they're they're all top class. And, and what I like about this um, this this Kerry management and Peter Keane, and and you know by his by his interviews how tough he is and stuff like that, he has taken away the entitlement. You know, for a couple of years there, Tim, I thought myself that a lot of players thought they were entitled to play for Kerry, and you can see now there's the players have a bit of fear. No, because you know the, the jersey could be taken off you very quick. Is Peter Keane ruthless? And, oh, he's ruthless. Yeah, and, uh, and, and you won't and, get by unless you're ruthless. You, you can you can see that in him, like, and he he's a businessman as Does well. Does that come so from the business side? It you, comes from business. Are you know, ruthless? And no, it wouldn't be nice for the Tim. But you go back to to uh, and Dinny was on about his 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 father and the family and the whole lot, and I know I know all of them. He's steeped in football. And I used to his father, Lord Merston Longo, uh, uh, when he was in the building trade. And like Tom Tom was tough, and and you can see where Peter Peter's after bringing it from, and and. And that is the one thing that I admire him for is that we we spoke about it here for for a year or two. There was a small bit of entitlement creeping into the Kerry setup that yeah I'm going to be there again next year. But that's not if if, if 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 you don't do it for 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 Peter Keane, you won't be there. Yeah, definitely so. Uh, will we speak about the Dublin game after the break and think about what Liam said there? Was there a sense of entitlement by players in the past? Let us know. Uh, we've plenty more after this break. Terrace Talk on Radio Kerry with Tim Moynihan. Mondays from 6 to 8 p.m. You're very welcome back here to Terrace Talk and uh, later in the programme I'll be speaking to our own Gary O'Sullivan about uh, yesterday's game. Uh, got a comment in here from Dennis Gairn uh, on Morris Deegan. I have to say I thought his performance was disappointing. He was too pedantic, stopping the game for non-serious injuries thus stopping the flow of the game. Some of his decisions were debatable to say the least. From where I was sitting I thought the Tyrone player deserved a red card for the high tackle on Kerry goalkeeper. Instead he received a yellow on the other hand, uh, Connor Lane had a satisfactory outing on Saturday night uh, with the Dublin Mayo game. The appointment of the referee for the final uh, will be interesting. Let's hope it's not a uh, Joe McQuillan again. Congratulations to our seniors for putting up a courageous display and tough look on the minors. They did the county proud. Uh, look was not on their size and the latter there were at least three or four players whom I expect to see playing with Kerry in the future. And thank Kiriabu, and that comes from Dennis Gairn. Um, Dinny, can I ask you that? Because there was a number of people said it to us after the game that um, Tyrone, a few off-the-ball incidents and one, we, I was watching myself and we uh, alluded to in the commentary, was uh, Peter Hart trying to get some sort of retaliation from Shawnee Shea. Um, it's in the game, isn't it? Yeah, sure, Tim. I'm not saying it should be in the game, no, but no, it's, no, it's, no, it happens it, with certain teams. Yeah, sure, sure. You know, teams are trying to, and managers, uh, you know, they're trying to get every advantage. And uh, that's unfortunately, it's it's creepy into the game. And I think that, you know, it has to be stamped out. And, and the only people that can stamp it out are the officials on the day. And, you know, we've spoken several times here about umpires and linesmen and, and referees. They all should be working together in every game, just not in, in, in big games. They should be working in all games because there's no referee can watch 
when the players are one into the field, he has to stay with the ball. I think a big problem with umpires, and Liam has been an umpire for a number of years, and linesmen, that they're all watching the game and they're following the ball. Now, it would be very hard to get fellas who wouldn't watch the, the ball and watch the game. So... The, the ideal scenario would be if you could get fellas who had no interest in, in Gaelic football to officiate the Lions and the umpires. At least in these fellas that are, that's what's going on off the ball could be, could be taken up. But until such time as that the umpires and linesmen can call yeah. on the referee and say, look, number two or number six or number four, whatever number it is. You won't get any, no punishment will it, be there. Correct. Uh, those comments, uh, I know I'm going back to as far as 1975. It was a brilliant match when Kerry beat Dublin. This Kerry team are young and shouldn't fear anyone. That comes from Margaret in North Kerry. I was watching the game and listening to Radio Kerry. I thought Jer Canning and Desi Dolan were boys towards Tyrone. The first half commentary was very harsh on Kerry and had them written off and were given out about the management that comes from a Milltown caller um, I suppose when, we, when we're local radio we're representing Kerry I can be quite biased biased uh, I want Kerry to win <laughs> and no different to, to Ambrose but at national level you have to be very balanced Liam don't you? They do yeah yeah, and uh, and, and credit to yourself Ambrose <laughs> you, you do be a bit biased alright <laughs> for Kerry but uh, yeah definitely at, at national level they should well, you uh, have to be, you're speaking should, to the nation then. you're speaking to the nation so they should keep some type of balance in it but uh, yeah I heard a couple of comments alright today and I saw a few a few things written about how George Canning was kind of favouring Tyrone, even up to the last 10 minutes, he was kind of saying that, that Tyrone could get a goal here and uh, try to get Tyrone well, back. Why would you? I don't know, it's, I don't know, you'd have to... Is Joe Canning from Cork, did he? <laughs> He's a Cork man. Um, John, no, you're not all like that. Look how you support us, <laughs> didn't he? Uh, John from Tarbert wants Tim to ask John and Liam again about our full back line. They're going around the houses and not giving an accurate <laughs> account. They need to give Get off the fence. Our full back line were taken to the cleaners and had no support from the sideline. John, I will give you the stage. I would say we're taken to the cleaners, Tim, being honest with you. In fairness, no. I thought Tyg Morley held his own with, with Matthew Donnelly. Uh, you know, I did very well on him. I thought Tyg or uh, Jason, Jason Foley did. did as well as any were doing on McShane. McShane. And, and one player we didn't mention, Tim, Tom Sullivan. Yeah, brilliant. What did uh, Peter Hart do? Nothing. Nothing, only trying to get Johnny And he played him excellently. I'll tell you, it was a top-class defensive performance by Tom Sullivan. And I questioned him here a few weeks ago, defensively, that he was a superb attacking defender, but... He nullified him. He nullified him totally. It's very easy to say that there was nothing done. We know that Paul Murphy should have played probably deeper. Dini has ex- explained that brilliantly. But it wasn't done for one reason or another. But it was done in the second half. Jason Foley was substituted and maybe a bit harsh, in fairness, if you think, because what had McShane done? But Tyg Marley had a more of a physical presence, I felt, on him. And, uh, you know, I thought that our defence, we, we did tighten up in the second half. But I said it earlier on, Tim. Tyrone are a team that dictate when they're ahead. When you get ahead of Tyrone, they have, they have to, to abandon their plans, right. they have to come out of their shell, and then the gaps appear. And certainly that's what Kerry did. And do, it, do you know John from Tarbert? I don't. There's a lot in of the John, second half, Tim, of like, the day. second half, we didn't, we didn't rule have a sweeper in the second half either. We we still played the same the same way in the second half. Only that Ty Morley kind of nullified McShane, and plus, you know, the we also ran Liam at us. But I, and, and that's where the likes of Sherwood and these fellas came into ten because yes. when we got the broke when we when, when we broke the ball, we were able to run at speed and we kind of turned the tables in, in, in Tyrone. So is it very noticeable now, Liam, that the likes of Jack Sherwood, there's players actually hitting form. You don't want to hit form in the month of April, but they're hitting form at the right time. They are, yeah. When you look Jack Sherwood, t- Tommy Welsh, these guys, uh, like, there's going to be big decisions to be made. Our captain, Gavin White, uh, I think I think another fellow that we didn't mention defensively, I thought Gavin Crowley has, has yeah. played very well all year. I think he really has kind of, he's going to be a big man for the final now for us, where who, the, who, who the, he's going to match up with. He's going to match up with one of, their big, one of their big guns. Do you think there's another surprise or two coming from Peter Keane as far as players are concerned? Well, there would be. Peter's no problem pulling a guy oh, in. Peter's no problem and, and he, do, he doesn't care about you or me or buying a programme or who's on the programme or whatever. This kind of, we said it here before, like Peter's well, going he to... he does text me the teams and all. <laughs> Peter's going to, Peter's going to pick the team who he wants and he's not going to worry about Liam Brass and John Kennedy or Denis Long. Do you know, so I think there could be one or two changes, do you know, in the squad and that's what, getting back to my point earlier, that's what Peter has brought, brought into the Kerry thing, that every player is not entitled 
get a, a position, you, you earn your position and you hold on to your jersey. Yeah, great stuff. We've loads of comments tonight, a huge listenership, and we're lucky to have that, and hopefully, uh, well, we won't say entertain, hopefully that uh, we're giving them a good analysis of the game yesterday. The ball going into the Tyrone uh, forward line in the first half was very good, and the Kerry backs had little chance of cutting it off. This changed when the pressure was put on the Tyrone players outside. Sherwood and White played well when introduced, and Tommy Walsh was great target man. The Kerry defenders did well overall, but I think Paul Murphy uh, was played in a role too far out to pick up the breaks from Foley. No problem. We will take the dubs, have faith. And that comes from Eddie in Tralee. Good evening, Tim and panel. Great programme as always. What do the panel think of Tommy Walsh's uh, contribution? I personally think he should start on September the 1st and we need his experience and height. Please discuss. And that comes from Mary and Valencia. Denis, we, all, we already said it about the 15 finishing and 15 starting. Again, uh, that's in the lap of the gods as well. It depend- Look, you have actually... What, what way does training work for the next couple of weeks, Denny? Oh. You've three weeks out. Mm. Will they go hard? I presume that, you know, they'll take a couple of days off and, I, you know, I probably Wednesday, Thursday, they'll start back and, you know, they haven't that much time really. Three weeks is, is short enough, but it's, it's ideal uh, for, for preparation for the All-Ireland. You know, they'll probably do seven or eight hard days. That, that'll be the most out of the three weeks that they're going to do. But going back to Tommy Welsh... Uh, you know, it's perceived that that Dublin are weak enough inside in the full back line. And if you look at the the Mayo game, one ball that was hanging in the air, Cluxton didn't know whether to catch it or punch it. And you know, whereas he's been a fantastic goalkeeper, the ball broke around the square, and you know there was danger there. Now, if you have Tommy Welsh inside, I think the plus for Tommy Welsh yesterday. And the problem for the Tyrone fullback was that he he was afraid the high ball was going to come in, and he allowed Tommy and the players outside use Tommy better because they played it low into him. Now I presume when when Tyrone saw t- Tommy coming on, they thought they were going to be bombarded, bombarded. with high ball, and and they did the very opposite. Is which, that is that credit into the management? Of course it is, because if 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 the if, if the if the opposition think it is going to come high, then they're in no man's land because the ball was coming low and they couldn't take the gamble because if the ball comes high between Tommy Walsh and one to one, it's very hard to do anything with him. Nine out of ten balls he'll catch. Yeah, great stuff. Uh, while Walsh, uh, Begley and Sherwood uh, made a big um, impact, it was always to be at the expense of Inright, who was doing it in most games. Uh, we've plenty more after this break. Terrace Talk on Radio Kerry. Brought to you in association with BrianJames.ie. Leading the way for stylish menswear in Kerry. Did you're very welcome back here to Terrace Talk. I've Dinny Long, John Kennedy and Liam Brosnan in studio. Later on the programme, I will be speaking about a career in sports. IT Tralee has the only coaching and sports performance course coach in Ireland. Uh, now, Jacqueline Hens Histon sent a considerable email to us, uh, but to get to the crux of it and syncing up TV co- coverage with Radio Kerry commentary, at the moment, Satellite TV is a few seconds behind the radio. Our producer has the following trick to sort that problem. And if you'd like to hear the Radio Kerry commentary. Step one, play the um, Radio Kerry audio through the app or website as opposed to the radio. This will put the TV coverage a few seconds ahead of the audio. Then step two, align the TV coverage up later with the radio coverage by pausing TV coverage for a few seconds and you'll have the best of both worlds. Now one man that you've listened to and you'll be listening to him in the future as well, the great Gary O'Sullivan is on the line. Good evening Gary. Good evening, Tim. How are you? Not too bad. Uh, welcome to Terrace Talk once again. Thanks a million. Um, first of all, Gary, and we've been to many a game, you and I, and we our chats along the route. You often speak to me about... P- Peter Keane seems to be the common denominator tonight, but you're one man that knows him better than any. Um, first of all, as a footballer, Peter Keane, um, can you tell me about his exploits in South Kerry? And he was very highly rated, wasn't he? Yeah, he was a great footballer, Tim. Um was a Kerry Miner himself, uh, a wing forward in his day. Lightning pace, um, great head for the game. Uh, As far as I'm aware, he has four under-21 county championship medals. Uh, Played with a great South Kerry team there in uh, in the late 80s and the early 90s. Uh, But comes from a a great uh, background, great pedigree. His late dad, Tom, of course, um, 
uh, actually back in in the in 81 and 82 when South Kerry won the championship his dad was the selector and he was chairman of the board at the time and uh, steeped in GA and it been you know, we all know his brother Ray what he has done in in Cork uh, this year and all of the Keens have, have been great GA people down through the years long before Peter ever got involved um, in in the management but like as I said before too as a player he was he was a brilliant brilliant player with St Mary's and and with South Kerry so uh, I, I have the utmost respect. He's a great friend of mine, Peter. We, we grew up together, and uh, he's, he's a great guy. And uh, I, I have great faith in Peter Kane, Tim, uh, in the sideline now as the manager. He's, he's top class. And, and Gary, in Kerry's play at the moment, especially I suppose in the second half, yes, can you see a mark of the way he played the game, uh, the way the game mirrored yesterday? Well, possibly. Look, you're looking at a different era, Tim. Um, possibly, I suppose. Look, it's, uh, he's trying to introduce the running game. Uh, if if you even if I only made a comparison to, to Peter Kane and Stephen O'Brien now, the Stephen O'Brien that I used to commentate on what was a guy that had the head down running into cul-de-sacs, wasn't scoring as much. The Stephen O'Brien now, Tim, is a completely different animal altogether. He's a guy that has the head up. He's the guy that's scoring more. And that, that's the kind of a player that Peter Kane was himself. His head was always up. He was buzzing around. He was looking in and seeing who, who was available inside. He was playing the one-two fast ball and scoring, Tim. Peter Kane, as a player, was a great scorer for South Kerry and, and for his club, St. Mary's, as well. And, it, you know, it's just a small little comparison if I had to pick out. Stephen O'Brien versus Peter Kane. They both kind of played in the number 12 position uh, when Peter was playing. He was a half forward as well or, or maybe a you know, corner forward coming out the field. So, But it's, it's the pace, I think, that he's trying to introduce him in, into, the Kerry, um, into the Kerry forward line in particular now. And, and it's very evident for everyone to see that that's, that's the, the game plan he's trying to implement. And we mentioned forwards there, Gary. You've commentated on great forwards down through the years. Um, David Clifford now, and obviously Paul Ganey was there in your time as well. Uh, what do you think of these forwards? And likewise, Stephen O'Brien, you just mentioned him there. What do you think of the, the starting six forwards yesterday for Kerry? Oh, they're a class act, Tim. They're a class act. I mean, David Clifford is as good as I think I've ever seen at his age. I mean, his physique alone is a huge man. He's well able to look after himself. Uh, he's got right or left. He's got the solo hop. He's got the solo dummy. He's a target man. Uh, to me, there are no flaws in David Clifford's game anyway. Uh, Paul Ganey has, has, has been a revelation uh, this year as well, Tim. Look, I mentioned O'Brien, but any one of the six, you know, and, and, and any one of the guys that he brings in, like your panel said there yesterday, like that they worked, they worked a treat, all the switches. Every one of them did work a treat, but in particular, like the introduction of Tommy Welsh and Jack Sherwood. And again, I go back to the pace. That's what Sherwood bought into the middle of the field. He bought pace and he bought the running game. And Tim, that's the way it's gone with the last couple of years with the black card. And you'll know yourself, if you put a hand on any guy coming through with pace, you cannot mark pace. And, and you can't beat it. A target man winning the ball and a guy coming through the middle or coming through the wings. If there's a hand put on him in any shape or form uh, by the defender, uh, he's gone. So I think that's... I, I, I'd be very confident, Tim, for, for, the, first of, um, for the first of September. With the way Kerry played in the first half yesterday, you 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 would, you would you, that wouldn't do now to beat Dublin. But I mean, in the second half and when Peter and the, and the guys changed things around, it was an outstanding performance. If if I was a little bit critical, Tim, and in the last couple of games, I think we're conceding a bit too much. Uh, you know, I mean, you'd ask yourself, would Donegal score twenty points against Dublin? I don't think they would have. Uh, like Meath only scored four points against Dublin. Meath scored one thirteen against Kerry, and I know the Cork game was a bit. 310, you know, we conceded against Cork, and you could argue the fact that, well, Cork got 117 against Dublin, which is 20 points to 19, but I think if we can tidy up a little bit at the back, but the final, Tim, could be a total uh, different ball game altogether. Could take on a life as own. Well. Uh, plus the fact, um, Gary, around our county, and it's lovely to be in an All-Ireland final, it's a br- going to be a brilliant buzz for the next couple of weeks, and uh, as, time, as you get closer to it, you'll either be saying Kerry won't or Kerry will, and that's the joys of sport, isn't it? It is, Tim. And from, look, from the players' point of view and from the manager's point of view, they're in bonus territory. I don't think too many expected us to get to an All-Ireland final this year. I don't think too many expected us to get to a league final and a championship final in the one year. But they've done that. And win or lose, I think you have to give great credit to the players and to the management for what they have achieved this year. Uh, it's been outstanding. But, Tim... Whatever way Dublin will camouflage this, 
they will say, oh, it's just another game. It's not. This is history in the making. This is five in a row. And I spoke down through the years to, to, the, to the guys who were there in 82. And it's, it's, it's now in a, and in later years that they did admit, look, it probably got to us on the day. It's huge, Tim. And for every why that Dublin will kick that day, the pressure will be mounting on them. If Kerry can keep to their tailcoats all the time, keep hanging in there with them, I think Kerry are in bonus, Terry big time. There's nobody, not too many in any counties that are expecting Kerry uh, to beat Dublin. But Kerry are a different kettle of fish, Tim, when they go to Crow Park, as we always know. And I think the beauty about these guys, these young fellas, they have no fear because they have very rarely lost games themselves. I know you can say it's minor games or whatever, but Tim, winning, you win, you know yourself, you keep winning, it, you, the, the, the trend will continue. So I, I think there's going to be huge pressure in Dublin at the day, and they will camouflage it. But Tim, the media, and you and I, and everybody knows the way the media works, they will pump Dublin up to the last. Now, whether they can, whether they can take it and handle it, Jim Gavin is a great man to sidestep it and do all that, but at the end of the day, I think, once that ball is thrown in at 3.30 on the 1st of September, it's a different ball game completely for the next hour. A quick uh, word on matchups, um, Gary. Uh, the big player for them all along is uh, McCaffrey, uh, Jack McCaffrey at wing back, and he loves to stride into the heart of the opposing defence. Who do you think he'll pick up? It's hard to say, Tim. Uh, it, it, they, they'll probably look. They, they'll go through a couple of matchups themselves in training. I, I think. I think our biggest. You mentioned McCaffrey and rightly so, but there's so many of them. Uh, there's so many of them that you could mention. But I think our big man that we need to, to do something with is Finton. I think Finton, with all due respect to David Morden, and he's our main man around the middle of the field. I don't think Morden would be the man for Finton. I would put a runner on Finton. I think Morden, Michael, Darren, McCauley now would be a right matchup. Uh, they'd probably suit each other. But we need to. I would need maybe looking at, at, at a runner for Finton, or, or looking at a, a marker or a midfielder for Finton. Because Jack, Jack Barry did a brilliant job in the league final a couple of years ago. He did absolutely. He did. Kerry have options. I mean, who's to say Sean Shea couldn't do a job in the middle of the field? Gavin White couldn't do a middle of the job. Jack Sherwood, as we know, can do a middle of the job. So yeah, legs must mark legs, Tim. Pace must mark pace. But it's going to be. It's going to be intriguing and, and we're all saying like have, have Dublin got the de- or have we got the the defenders to mark this the Paul Mannions of this life and all that but have Dublin got the defenders Tim to mark the carry forwards I don't think for instance Michael Fitzsimons will be picking up David Clifford I'll put it you like that and you can be adding two and two together why I'm saying that I think Clifford is far superior forward to, to, to Michael Fitzsimons and who's going to mark O'Brien have they got a man for Tommy Walsh coming in we know their full back line is suspect so it's going to be interesting, Tim, but again, I go back to what I said to you at the very start. I have the utmost faith in Peter Kane and his management team to get the matchup spot on. Great stuff. And I suppose, Gary, you'll go up on the Thursday or the Friday before us. You normally make a, a big weekend out of this occasion. Well, Tim, for the first time in 14 years, I'll be looking for a ticket. So I know you're the man that won't let me down. So uh, I'll be there if I can. What part but of the Hogan or Cusick do you want to? They might go anywhere. I'd sell ice cream on the day if it got to me inside the door that it do me. I know a better man to sell something to make a few euros. Uh, Gary, thanks a million. It's great to hear your voice again on Radio Kerry this evening and we'll be chatting to you very soon. Cheers, Tim. All the best. And that's the great Gary O'Sullivan, of course, and given his insight there um, to the game and what might happen against Dublin. Well, now, uh, Jamie Barrett, a thorless man, has a famous piece of Kerry memorabilia. He uh, spoke to Eamon Hickson over the weekend about attending the 2001 All-Ireland quarterfinal between Kerry and Double in Semple Stadium. Have a listen to this. Jamie, first and foremost, you're a thorless man, which might explain why in 2001, when Morris Fitzgerald was lining up that kick on the sideline, you were close enough to the goal. Can you tell us about what happened? I was, yeah. Uh, I'm a tourist man. Yeah, I used to work in the stadium myself when I was younger. And that day I was actually working for in a pub and managed to get a ticket and went up to the match. And being a former kind of employee in the stadium, managed to get onto the field uh, in the second half and was ended up behind the goals there for Morris's uh, famous point. Um, so yeah, I just kind of blagged my way onto the field, really knew the guys working on the gates and they let me in. So when Morris Fitzgerald kicked the ball over the bar from the sideline, uh, I understand that ball made its way to your hands. That ball, yeah, eventually, yeah. Um, Davy Byrne, their Dublin goalie, kicked out a separate ball. And the ball that went over the bar was left in the goals. And I asked him for, for the ball after the match. And the parents, when he turned around, and kicked it into me. So I had to put it under my jacket and smuggle it out of the stadium. And do you still have that football? I still have it at home, yeah. I wrote the, the date and the score on, on the ball. Just because it was Dublin and Kerry, more so than because the point was so good, I suppose, at the time, I was only 20 years of age. But it's a nice memento to have all these years later. 
It is, and uh, it's what eighteen years since that happened. And is yeah, it, is it a football that was just put into up on the shelf somewhere, or was it one that you kicked around afterwards? No, I didn't kick it at all. I left it. Uh, I had it actually in, in uh, my own wardrobe at home. And then when I moved house in 2005, I brought it with me. I made sure to bring it with me and again went into the wardrobe at home. So it's never been used since. And have you ever ever had a chance to meet Morris Fitz and tell him that you have that football? I haven't, to be answer, no. Yeah, so it's, it's something we might pass on to him here on, on Terrace Talk on Radio. If he wants it, I'd be glad to give it some. And, uh, and Jamie, being a Tipperary man, is, is football or hurling your number one sport? Hurling would be my number one. I would have played a small bit of kind of uh, under-21 and junior football with Tipperary. But our, our own club, Turner Sarsfield, would be predominantly hurling. You know, we'd have a football team every every second or third year. We might put a football team into the junior championship. But hurling is, uh, hurling is our passion. And Indeed. And so, outside that, you still have one of the, I suppose, the greatest mementos from uh, maybe even a Kerry point of view over the last decade yeah, or yeah, two. It works out. What age were you when that happened? I was 20. I was, uh, it was May 2001. I was 20 years of age, so... And it's not a ball you're going to take out of the wardrobe anytime soon and start kicking no. around? No, I would not. I would not. It's never, it literally never seen the light of day, I'd say, from, from the moment I got it. Yeah, great stuff there, and it's great to hear that story. And, uh, well, we watched it the last night. Well, I watched it the last night again, and what a free that was by Morris Fitzgerald. Of course, uh, the lads are still staying with us, uh, Dini Long, uh, John Kennedy and Liam Brosnan. After the breaks, I'll be asking the lads what they think the matchups will be against the Mighty Dubs. Terrace Talk on Radio Kerry, brought to you in association with BrianJames.ie, leading the way for stylish menswear in Kerry. You're very welcome back here to Terrace Talk. I've Dini Long, I've John Kennedy and Liam Brosnan in studio. Before we speak about um, that Dublin game, a few texts coming through to us. Uh, what a second half. Uh, well done to all. I wonder what uh, would the great late Weeshy be saying uh, this evening on Terrace Talk. And that comes from a listener in Clare. Hi Tim, uh, Kerry have played in the league final, will play in an All-Ireland final and who knows, they may win. I think it's fantastic and a lot of these guys are starting their journey on the senior county level right now. I don't know how many Men in the green and gold uh, that will fear Dublin or any team in the future. That comes from Mick Hanavan. I don't fear Dublin. We have to believe in our players. That comes from West Kerry. Uh, well done to Peter Keane and the management team. I hope that the powers in Kerry will make their feelings known about David Goff. Hi, Tim. Congrats uh, to Peter Keane and the Kerry team in getting to the All-Ireland. That's a great achievement. Uh, we will stop the dubs from their five in a row. And that comes from Kieran in Knock Negotial. Hi, Tim. I think uh, my text was lost in translation. My suggestion is to play Morn in a free roll, sweeping between the defences in midfield. He has the engine, Barry and Spillane in midfield. Morn assisting the kickouts. Welch up top, Brendan, Offaly and Killarney. Mighty performance from the seniors. You'd never panic. A uh, lot of cool heads for young players. Well done uh, to the Kinmere district players, especially Gavin Crowley. They all had a huge part in the win. That comes from Kitty O'Connell. Uh, Dingle Caller said Dublin footballers are able to break the tackle and their power and strength is incredible don't think Kerry have that sort of strength Amethyst Morris couldn't sort the defence and Peter Keane still can't sort the team that comes from a Bally Duff caller um, Liam Brosnan we're talking about Dublin can we mention the the, uh, the match-ups uh, I suppose we mentioned to Gary about um, Jack McCaffrey now he's been a thorn on many sides he's speed he stops uh, holds the ball then he takes off at the rate of knots how do you mark him or who will mark him? Yeah, it's going to be very interesting because you're not only talking about McCaffrey, you're talking Kilkenny, who I thought had a big second half for Dublin the, the weekend. He was poor poor in the first half, but when he came into the second half, he kind of, everything that, that good happened went through Kilkenny. So the likes of him, I think Gavin Crowley would be an ideal man for, for the likes of Kilkenny. Um, Scully, who who is who is a guy that can run and run and run all day for you. It'll be interesting to see will they, will they match Paul Murphy up with the likes of Scully. You're looking at Brian Howard then. Are you looking at Begley slash Shane Enright? I think the inside line is going to be the most interesting one when you have the likes of Callahan, Callahan, Rock and Mannion. You know, so I, I do think looking at Callahan and looking at some of the pictures over the weekend and the, the, si- the size, the biceps. I think Marley is, our, our, is the, the, the guy ideally suited for him. Um, Dean Rock, uh, Dean, we were just saying it off air there. Like Jason Foley would manage Dean Rock, we reckon. You know, so and Mannion, 
big interesting one that we, like, we, like, that we were just talking there a second ago and, and John said Tom Sullivan had a massive game the weekend would would Tom Sullivan run away with um, with Mannion and Mannion's strong the only fear I'd have there is Mannion might be just have that bit, bit too much strength but um, there are your matchups um, middle of the field you're looking at McCauley and Finton I'll let John pick his, pick his men for there uh, Darren McCauley it would be a right old battle between himself and David Moore. David Moore, yeah I think so Tim and then it remains to be seen will they go with Adrian Spillane will they go with Jack Sherwood Jack, or, Jack, or Jack, Barry. Jack Barry Jack Barry you know, there are Jack, options though Jack Barry has, has, a, has a great history with Brian Finton and he's done exceptionally well on, on, on two big games with him so you know a lot will happen Tim in the next three weeks inside in training um, you know and that's not bypassing the question no it's, it's Jack Sherwood brings you a pace and, in, and, and a running at the defence uh, whereas Jack Barry would be, and if he was there, would would be to nullify Brian Finton and would be to cancel him out, which he has done successfully on two occasions. Now I'm going to play in my seat at the moment. I'm Jim Gavin. Now I'm trying to do matchups. Uh, you're John. You're one of my selectors. Um, what are we going to do about this boy Clifford? Uh, well, what I'd say to him, his biggest problem could be first, not to avoid your question, is who will carry play for forward. And I think that could no, be. I'm Jim Gavin. No, yeah. we're not talking. I, I, well, if if, I, if we were to play about. Tommy Welch full forward, it would really upset his plans. Johnny Cooper wouldn't mark him. That would upset his plans. Uh, David Clifford, you know, he is Davy Bourne and he is mixed with Simons. They'd be under pressure with, with David Clifford, whichever will be there. He tends not to change too much around. Well, you you're a Dublin selector at the minute now. You can't say they. It's we. Yeah, we. Yeah. What, what What are we going to do about this boy Clifford from Foster? The shooting the lights out. I'd say he'd put Davy Davy Bourne no, or, or you, Mick Fitzsimons on we, him. We, we, one, one of the two, one of the two cornerbacks. He's not going to change. No, we. We, get, we're, 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 you're a selector. <laughs> you're a dominant <Donald's> selector. <laughs> we're looking from the outside in, no, Tim. He doesn't. We don't have many options. We don't have many options. I'm just after. I'm after yeah. bringing you on the management team, and I'm asking you. you see, Tim, who, who we are, are we going to put on Paul Gainey? We are talking. We are talking about our Kerry. There's defense. no listen to this conversation. We're, no, this is between the we two. We are talking about our Kerry defence here, Tim, all along. But you look at the Dublin defence. They are not as good as they were. He doesn't want to Philly be Dublin, McMahon, he? Philly McMahon has, has come out, he's out of favour. Yeah. He's, he's a bit player now. Johnny Cooper pick up Paul Galvin. Johnny, I think the, I think the, the Dublin full back line is weak. And, and, and we ha it could be our strongest line, to be fair. If you have Paul Ganey, David Clifford and Tommy, Tommy Welch. Welch or Killian Spillane, whoever's in there, we'll cause trouble for those. Dinny. You're a Dublin selector. You're on my team at the moment because John Kenny doesn't want to be. <laughs> <laughs> Who? What are we going to do about this boy, Stephen O'Brien, on Sunday? He's tormenting defences with the last number of months. He's going for Player of the Year. We have to do something about this guy. Who are we going to put on him? Well, I think that possibly that they will play. Uh, I think Small will mark him yeah. uh, because I think. Uh, James McCarthy will go to the middle of the field. I think Darren McCauley won't start against Kerry. That's my opinion. And to go back to the Dublin full-back line, I think Fitzsimon it will play full-back. I think Johnny Cooper will pick up Clifford, believe it or not. And a fellow who I rate very highly is Davy Byrne. You know, very few mentions him. He's a right good footballer. And if you think about it, whereas Philly McMahon has definitely gone back a bit not much, no, but he's gone back a bit. But the reason I'm saying he's gone back a bit is that he probably is not in Jim Gavin's starting 15 anymore. Mm -hmm. He's a man to come in. So that Dublin for back line, uh, not that weak. And I think that Cooper, you look at Cooper, he goes into everything. He, he's a bit of a... He, he's, he, you'd love to have him on your team. And I think David Byrne is very underrated and Fitzsimons where he wouldn't feel the ball with Tommy Welsh he certainly would be, he's cute to break it away so it, where there is a question mark about him it's not a big question mark in my opinion but Dini I wouldn't disagree with you if, if they put James McCarthy midfield who's going to play centre back? I think that you could Sullivan I, Ian, you could see yeah, Sullivan like coming Sol Sullivan and Munchen are the two guys yeah. that seem to be coming on defensively for him in the last couple of weeks yeah. I suppose what, I, what I'm trying to do for our listeners and myself and Glyme I'm wearing my supporters cap tonight is that we're going up with a lot of confidence lads that Jim Gavin will have to put something uh to make uh, his players aware of the threat of Kerry. So he has to put a plan in place. He has to put a plan in place even for David Moore because David is playing 
out of his skin at the minute. And the forwards that we have, it isn't like playing in a Tyrone team or any other team. For individuals, he'll have to put a plan in place then. He will, and looking at Jim Gavin down through the years, what they, what they usually do is they try to turn the tables on the opposition. So basically, the, the like Small and, say, Stephen O'Brien, like he'll be hoping that just that, that, when, that Stephen will have to mark Small instead of Small marking Stephen. So he'll be, he'll be egging his half-backs to attack up the field as often as, often as, uh, as they can. But looking at Dublin even Saturday night, their, def- their defensive structure, it's, it's, it's a basketball setup. I, was, I, I paused it, I looked at it several times. They play a kind of um, a zonal, they play a zonal defence and they're the one team in the country that have it down to a T. Basically, no, if, if your half-back is not in the play, if your half-forward, if the carry half-forward isn't in the play, the Dublin half-back sits into the middle. He sits into the middle. And then they go kind of a box and wand in as well, which means whoever has the ball is being marked face, he's been marked up of face and everybody else sits off their men and they're, they're closing the gaps and they're inviting teams to kick from 30 or 40 yards out and that's where we have the danger men that can do that. We're the one county that can kick points from, and we proved it the weekend from 30 and 40 yards out but I do think Dublin are going to be worried about our forwards. That makes it very interesting for our next point John that I've heard from rumours from different people that they've brought in uh, guys from the IRFU, players from the IRFU even to how to open space, close space. Is it a case now, Kerry with footballers, it's a GA game, it's different to rugby, it's different to soccer, it's different. If you've natural footballers, you have to think about something else. We saw yesterday David Clifford kicking points for 40 yards. This isn't something that other players will be able to do to Dublin. Uh, what I'm trying to say is we have lots of options to break the science of the game. Oh, there's no doubt, Tim. And, you know, we have a lot of, of the ingredients that, that I think... Will, will trouble Dublin. We have pace to take on their half-backs. You know, Jack McCaffrey's a superb player. But look what Paddy Durkin did last yeah. week. Do you know, an outstanding performance. He took him on. He attacked. I think we have Stephen O'Brien. You know, we had we had Jack Sherwood yest- last, last, yesterday to attack and take them on, put him on the back foot. And I feel... If we pick a full forward line of Paul Ganey and Clifford in the two corners and Tommy Welch full forward... You won't have, uh, I, you won't have Philly McMahon or Johnny I, Cooper marching down to the other side of the field. I guarantee you that. And, and if we can get quick ball into those guys, we have power, we have pace, we have kicking ability left and right. I think we can put them under pressure. And I don't agree with Dini. I think some of these guys over their head, they're not great. Wouldn't they, it be interesting? Sorry, John. When, when they work together, the cumulative is good when they're in together but man for man if we can open them up and isolate them inside you know I think that we can we can show weaknesses in that Dublin defence they're a superb team they work really really hard together but I feel we have forwards that can score and, and Dublin have forwards that can score it could be it could be a, a, you know a shootout but we have, we have we, the full forward line will be a huge area for us to, 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 to hurt Dublin yeah, great stuff. Uh, Dinny, uh, we talk about the players ma- marking each other out in the field. Who's going to win the battle, and not, we're different from the game now, the battle between Peter Keane, and he's one of the cutest men I've met in a long, long time, and Jim Gavin, sometimes you have to check, has he a pulse, because he doesn't say anything. Who's going to win that battle? Well, that's hard to call, Tim, but, you know... Both like you, 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 you've seen where they've come from. You said he's a real footballing man, no different. Uh, Jim Gavin is more scientific in his approach, and he's made it very professional. Mm-hmm. That's going to be a battle. Yeah, well, I suppose you'd have to you'd have to sway in Jim Gavin's favour based on what he has done. You know, Peter is new to the job. Peter has done a great job up to now. He took Kerry to the league final. The great majority, even of Kerry supporters, would not have expected to be in the league final or the All Ireland final. You know, there was a building process, a young team. You you'd have to favour Jim Gavin in that one, but. Peter Keenan, his management, proved and proved yesterday when the gun was to their head that they were willing to make the changes and the changes they made worked. They don't always work, but they worked yesterday. Will they go with that again and hold Sherwood and hold Tommy Welch? If I was picking it, I won't have any say in it, but if I was, I would go with my best team and I'd put Dublin under pressure from the word go. I don't think you can allow Dublin to go ahead of you and try to reel them in. I'd much prefer to go at them and take them on and if you can get, get ahead of them, see how they'll react. Because no matter how strong and how the, the five in a row will affect them, of course... Everybody will say it won't and they're isolated and they're in the bubble and they're in everything. 
They will tell you, about it. you'll still, you know, they're thinking about it today and at the mind in three weeks' time. It's hard to achieve five. No one did it. Dublin will be under pressure to do it. And to be fair, I think the two best teams are in the All-Ireland. Kerry are undefeated, Dublin are undefeated, and it's going to be a great showdown. It's a once-off game. But if I was a betting man, the betting, I think, is 9-2. to two. Uh, Kerry, 1-5 to five or something. Dublin, I don't understand the betting. Apparently... That's big odds for Kerry. Whether people will take it or not, I don't know. Interesting, Dinny. Uh, Liam, uh, <laughs> you're up to no good, I'd say, because you've requested an audio. If you put on your That's headphones <laughs> uh, from last week, and uh, Liam Brosnan asked for the lads' predictions to be replayed Impressive. from last week. <laughs> Uh, Liam, uh, are Kerry going to do it on Sunday? I fancy Kerry for a one or two point win. Quick word, uh, John. Uh, Kerry or Tyrone? It's a difficult one, Tim. I, I you know, if, if to be honest, I think Tyrone could share this one. We're near the carrier Tyrone, then. Uh, I think Tyrone just might share this. Yeah, that's very interesting. <laughs> uh, that's the power of radio. We have things in the archives, lads. We now take a break. Terrace Talk on Radio Kerry. Brought to you in association with BrianJames.ie. Leading the way for stylish menswear in Kerry. You're very welcome back uh, to Tara's Talk. Many thanks there to Dinny Long, Liam Brosnan and John Kennedy as we delved into what happened yesterday in Crow Park and look forward to the Dublin game. Uh, just before uh, we go to Emer Foley, of course, Emer uh, is going to be speaking to us about a career in sports. The IT Tralee has the only coach in sports and performance course in Ireland. I would just want to read a few texts because we've, they're too numerous to mention tonight. And, uh, well, thanks very much. I try to get as many as I can. Call a spade a spade. Should we insist on a neutral referee, um, all or any team will want is fair play and no to David Goff and Dublin and that comes from Jack uh, I don't know where he is it says Jack from Kerry but I'm sure there's a lot of Jacks in Kerry Dublin scored 2-6 in 11 minutes but only 1-8 over 65 minutes Kerry will have to make sure there's no blitz and then they can go on and win it if you're talking about boys commentary then Dara Maloney on RT is the worst keep it up Dublin talk yourself up there's only a young Kerry team waiting in the long grass and that comes from Johnny in Artford well I'm delighted to uh, uh, have here on Terrace Talk, uh, Emer Foley, of course, she's a lecturer in the IT, truly. And just at the break there, um, Emer, you were telling me, guys that we were speaking about all evening, two of those guys. Uh, two of them the are ours, men. yes. David Clifford, first. David has been in the IT with the last number of years. Yeah, David's going into fourth year, so he'll, with the new dates now of the All-Ireland final, he'll get an extra week recovery before he starts back with us on the ninth. Um, so obviously we're wishing him all the best of luck and also Gavin Crowley is uh, coming towards the end of doing a research um, masters, um, he's looking actually at training loads and intensities in, in the GA um, which is a very interesting topic as well so we're delighted to have the two lads And of course the, the course in general, it's not just the, the Gaelic football side but I, I suppose a, a cross section of different disciplines. That oh huge, be. yeah huge versatility of sports and I suppose when you look at the types of sports that are out there you know, in, in Ireland and not just Kerry you know, we have to remember these students and graduates are going out beyond Kerry and even, you know, over to, to the likes of America and Australia. So it's about giving them a, a, a ground, a, a, you know, a good base in sports and performance and uh, obviously the coaching side as well, that they can adapt to different sports, that they have the science and the knowledge behind them and the research and that they can, you know, that they can read up and they can, you know, maybe move laterally between different different dif- dis- disciplines. Emer, uh, it's grown, I suppose, in intensity, if you pardon the pun, mm-hmm. Uh, the likes of the Donegals of this world and I'm sure that I um, is it Aaron what's his surname Aaron Kyles Aaron I, Kyles yeah involved I just met him at the weekend he was down yeah. around the place yeah the so there's got, there, there's a huge outlet and there's the job prospects are huge even yeah. in our own country here and even with I saw on the sideline for Peter Keane at the weekend we had um, Podge Murphy and uh, Chris Flannery involved with that that grouping as well so I mean there's plenty of our graduates out there and they're proving that they you know they can be successful getting getting jobs but they're not I suppose Maybe, maybe it's not your your typical uh, job prospect where it's one job. You know, they're they're having to work hard. They're setting up businesses. They're, you know, subcontracting themselves into maybe different groups, different you know gyms. Um, you know, so it's it's you know, it's how, it's how a, vi- a ver- you know, variety. How, how we arrived at this? That uh, you're talking about going back a decade or mm-hmm. fifteen years ago. Uh, there was not probably a need like there is now for this. Is it because people have gone health conscious and is that part of it? Absolutely. I mean, again, I mean, our our, our new course is only one course. We also have the health and leisure course, which again is, you know, a very strong reputation in the country. Um, and, you know, the, the health 
the health buzz that has come, you know, and obviously the focus on well-being and, you know, that's been a, a major feature of our course for the last, going back 20 years. You know, we were probably one of the first, we talk about being the first at things, but well-being was, was, was one of our main topics that we covered. Um, and, you know, being able to look at, at health is not just physical, you know, it's holistic and look at all the different aspects. But, you know, there is a focus then on, on the sports, the, the performance element of it. But I like to think our, our students and our graduates they can they can do both. They can go to all different populations. I mean, we have some fantastic links with hospital groups, uh, community groups. You know, you have cardiac rehab groups coming in, um, Enable Ireland linking. You know, so there's lots lots of of different outlets. Um, so that you know, they're they're kind of crossing all kinds of different boundaries. Emma, it's a four year course. Mm-hmm. Uh, could you give us a, a general uh, synopsis of what happens in the first year and the second year? Yeah, well, our first gang are just finished first year. We you know we took in one group last year, um, a lovely group. A nice mix of different, uh, you know, all all interests. You know, you don't have to be playing at the top level. You know, there's a lot of coaches out there that aren't players or, you know, they've, you know, you'd want to have a very strong interest in sport and, you know, playing it obviously will give you give you certain advantages. But the, the first year is all about building the blocks and the foundations of their physiology, anatomy. Um, they're, they're looking at the, the kind of, even the physical education, the functional movement. Um, you know, they're looking at a little bit on research and then from there, you know, going into second year now, they're starting to get their teeth into, um, you know, into more of the resistance training methods, the, the performance training methods, you know, on how to actually go out and train a team, you know, so on the testing side of it. And then they'll, they'll start getting out into working with teams on the coaching side as well and getting some kind of work, work experience. But we're on the, the eve of, and the best of luck, by the way, to all our Terrace Talk listeners, being they may have, they may be listening to us themselves or their, their moms and their dads. It's a stressful time. I have a girl waiting for her results as well tomorrow and we'd like to wish the very best and hopefully you'll get what you want. So we're on the eve of it. So it's very important, Emer. Uh, to let us know what's the criteria for uh, trying to get onto the course or Yeah well but all our courses are now on the CEO I mean uh, last year was our first year with the coaching sports performance and it, it it was direct entry only but this year now it was on the CEO and I think it has performed quite well on it um, so but I suppose just my message would be don't panic you know if you don't get it you know it, it may come round two so you know just you don't panic and there are other options there are other routes you know just you know, you know And that's the that's big thing because we, absolutely. we're definitely around our county and country tomorrow there will be tears but the big thing is not there's so many angles and so many options nowadays for students well this is it I mean if you ask if you were to go out onto the street and ask people what did they study in their undergrad you could find a very different answer to what they're doing right now so I mean I I suppose there is pressures these days to maybe go on and do postgrad to maybe narrow your focus Um, our you know our course is a good stepping stone obviously to other courses in physio and um, you know we have a link up to UL for PE teaching so you know there's it's again it's not I suppose it is it's a hard day tomorrow for for people but you know just try try and keep the the doors open Uh, Talk to me about your academy the new academy I take it it's taken off we're delighted. We have a, a lot of space and light in a in a new home that we were waiting a long time for. Um, moved into our offices there in June. The gym is currently being kitted out this week. Um, a new manager is beginning as well, I think, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, so 9th of September is going to be a, a big day for both staff and students. Is that an added incentive as well for students going on to this oh, course or taking on this? It's a fantastic, I mean, you, you couldn't be anywhere else, but if, if you go up to visit and, and anyone, we'd be happy to take anyone on a little tour around you know to show them the facilities um, it's between the equipment the sp- again the space I think I could come back to the space up there it's 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 mind boggling you've got uh, you know an international sized hall that splits into three because I play a bit of basketball myself you know three big basketball courts um, so not only for the course itself I think for the again the community links and people maybe coming to, to use the facilities it's, it'll be huge Of course I'm thinking about this dream team as well for the IT I take it if there's an uptake by inter-county footballers around mm-hmm. the, the country that it'll strengthen Liam Brosnan's hand with uh, well, there's giving a, fantastic, a shot the yeah there's a great I mean I, uh, uh, Mr Moynihan from Spa is on the team uh, you know on IT Tralee there's, there's plenty of names up there at the moment and they, you know, they had a good run th- this year, but uh, David Clifford was obviously missing. So, um, hopefully now next year they'll they'll keep going. Emer, what did you do with your time? You had holidays, I take it. I had holidays, and it's not <laughs> too far away before you're back again. Back again, I go back to being a, a mom for the summer, and then I return back again is in that September. Is that, is that a <laughs> it's a major. <laughs> it's it's great, but it can, you know it's a it's a difficult transition to be trying to do both. But uh, so, but it's there's, nice to there's get there's out some massive work done up here, and this is a this is a new added incentive to, oh. to for for students that there's something else that they can do. This huge. 
and like, like us as a staff, we've massive expertise up there and we're developing with the building as well. So we're getting new technology, we're getting, you know, new ideas and, you know, the, the, the calibre of students will come with us. Great stuff. You the very best of luck. And like I say, we just want to echo those words again. Best of luck to everybody who's getting results tomorrow. And uh, well, the future is bright. We're, we're a great nation and we have a great education system. And have no fear, you get what you want, I'm sure. Uh, those comments coming through to us. Hi, Tim. I'm here in Begley's Cross, ovens in Cork, agreeing a lot with Dee Long, reading off Tommy Walsh and how he should be played. Keep them guessing and don't let Dublin take control uh, of the game. And that comes from John O'Shea of uh, Beaufort and Oven. Tim, you played a blinder yourself yesterday. I remember, remember me hollow hair in the 70s. He hated Kerry too. Dublin can be beaten and they're not infallible. And that comes from Madeline. Tim, forget about to try and get in your panel uh, a role to play. It ain't going to happen. Eileen in Ballin College. Well, we have a busy couple of weeks coming up uh, here on Terrace preparing for an All-Ireland final and what a place to be. I want to thank uh, everybody who contributed tonight, all those texts and emails. They sent through, unfortunately, we couldn't get to all of them. I want to thank uh, Matthew Green, who was on sound this evening, Eamon Hickson, who produced. Until next time, this is Tim Einhen saying goodbye.